Roses are red. Violets are blue. I'm about to fuck up, so what else is new? Traveling through a tunnel under sea. You never know the cracks in half. You never ever go. First love. That coxcomb evokes my late husband. Oh, this dianthus came from a cutting my mother gave me. And I always think of my daughter every time I look at a primrose. I know how hard this must be for you to understand. It's hard enough for me. I mean, why would any guy go and violate his parole when he's already spent half his life behind bars? It's about bloody time. Call it unfinished business, if you like. All I know is that nicking a bunch of flowers is a bloody sight different than what they put me away for at 18. The time I spent inside was hell on earth, but in a way, I welcomed it. I guess I felt I deserved it after what I'd done. After 15 years, I had accepted that this was what my life would always be. But a year before I met you, all that changed. We have some news which might be of interest to you. We're transferring you to Her Majesty's Prison Edgefield, a more progressive institution we consider you to be an ideal candidate for the work that they're doing there. Congratulations. You've been reclassified to Category D. It's taken me a long time to get used to this place, and I don't fancy the change, so if you don't mind, I'll stay put. What fresh air smells like. Follow me. I'm Governor Hodge. And this is our head of lifers, Mr. Dudley. You gentlemen have been selected from prisons across the country to join other inmates in our open system. As you may have noticed when you arrived, there are no high walls, razor wire fences, or security cameras. Nothing to stop you walking away. Here at Edgefield, we function on trust. Show us you can be trusted, and you're well on your way to being paroled. However, if we detect any signs of antisocial behavior, you will be immediately transferred back. 
to a secure prison. Am I dreaming? Or are they serving us tea and biscuits? Holly is from the WRVS. The Women's Royal Voluntary Service run the visitors' canteen. Holly, I'd like you to meet our new arrivals. Hello. Help yourself to tea, gentlemen. You must be parched. Come on. Don't be timid. I can recommend the chamomile. Chamomile it is, then. Fergus, Fergus Wilkes. Yeah. Dudley told me you'd be arriving today and I've been looking forward to meeting you. My last uh, bunk mate achieved his freedom uh, over two months ago. And it's a bit um, solitary in here, you know? Yeah, it'll be good to have someone to pass the time of day with. Listen, mate, I keep myself to myself. I'm not looking to bond with no one. I'm just going to do my time, keep my nose clean, all right? Perfectly understandable. I felt the same way myself when I was your age. But after a while, and I felt my own company pretty damn boring, if you want to know the God's honest truth. Oi, watch it, old man! Fuck! For fuck's sake! I'm, 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 I'm really sorry. Sorry. Oh, Jesus. I don't like that fella. Strange one, isn't he? See in for? He's a menace to society like the rest of us. What you in for then? Halfway through a six straight for armed robbery. You? Murder. Same here. I'm innocent. I'm not. Caught me on video, didn't they? You're a bit of an early bird, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Shit shaved and showered before I'd even put me two feet on the floor. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> word of advice. They're going to put you lads to work today. Do yourself a favour and steer clear of building maintenance. Laundry. That's the place to be. Come winter, when everybody's balls are frozen, you'll have the warmest seat in the house. I, um... <clears throat> I've a certain influence in laundry matters. In fact... The governor doesn't let anyone touch his shirts but me. Not a lot of people know that. This is not a holiday camp. Everyone works here. No free rides. Not for the governor, not for me, and certainly not for you lot. Whilst at Edgefield, you'll be required to work a job where you'll learn a trade and thus be prepared for employment upon your release. Together, you and I will find the job which suits you best. We have half a dozen job options for you, Mr. Briggs. Yet yeah, Dudley informs me you remain unemployed. How so? I don't care where you put me. It's not a question of where we put you, Mr. Briggs. It's more a question of where you put yourself. It's all the same to me. It doesn't make a scrap of difference whether I'm doing laundry, peeling potatoes, or carving rocking chairs out of oak trees. With my record, when I do get out of here, I'll be lucky enough to get any bloody job at all. So, you know, whatever. You leave me no choice but to make the decision for you.
you go. Home. Can I come? Very funny. Why don't you stand watching me play? I already have. You're terrible. Oi! I'm a bloody marble, me. Can I help you? What's wrong with him? He's in for his chemotherapy treatment. Cancer? Yes. Along with retinitis pigmentosa, osteoporosis and arthritis in his feet. Do me a favour, don't tell him I came here. Seven-bit plant. I just gave it a bit of water, that's all. Sometimes it takes very little to put things right. I'll remember. Oh. Merry Christmas. This oh, not too much. That's it. Oh, yeah. All oh, the Come on, Johnny. <laughs> Does he still tell all his mates his daddy's dead? Go and speak to him, Jimmy. Don't expect too much. Right then. <laughs> yeah. I hear uh, school's going great. Regulations. Sister Mary, I've told her so much about you. I'm no good with families. Oh, you'll be coming a bore. Well, you can have these anyway. Merry Christmas, Colin. Oh, for fuck's sake, don't do this. Too late. I've done it already, haven't I? You sure this is a good spot? Give me the seats. <coughs> you all right? Fine. You know it's a total waste of time, don't you? So cold, those little buggers don't stand a chance. They said that about me, didn't they? But I proved them wrong. I turned my life around. Turned your life around? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're a blind, crippled old fart who's been locked up all his life. Even if you get paroled, you won't have any time left to enjoy it. I'll never be paroled, Colin. What? Nah. I'm one of the few in here who'll never walk out. I'll spend the rest of my days in Edgefield.
sweet. But it's against regulations. I know it is, I know. We just put it in your ear. <laughs> It's just lovely, I Where'd you find it? I, f I found it quite near the pitch. It's, um... <laughs> um... I'll beg it back. Yeah, they've got no chance without me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later, yeah? Spring is here. What? Oh, I can't see a bloody thing. I don't know why you bother with those specs. They hide me wrinkles. Oh, I've got better things to do, you know. You we should have marked the spot. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I've had enough of this. Colin? You found them, haven't you? Yes. Are they beautiful? Very. They never stood a chance, Fergus. I told you. It's all about defying the odds. Adversity is your ally, Colin. Huh? Make friends with your misfortunes. Otherwise, you'll always be angry. Toss it back, will you? What you gonna do that for? You ruined our bleeding flowers. How what? Look, from now on, this area is off limits. Hey, lads, come and get this. What's that? Matt. The football pitch is now off limits. Hey. Wanna know why? Hey. In case we trample their little pansies. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, wouldn't that be a catastrophe? Well, if it ain't the lilies of the field... Well... Look here. I don't think we give a shit about your fucking flowers. <laughs> Go on, Ron! <laughs> That'll do. We don't look upon altercations very fondly here at Edgefield. Much less those resulting in bloodshed. And all over a... pansy? A violet, sir. A double violet, actually. A double violet? And a scented one at that. In this terrible limestone soil of ours? <sighs> Pity. And your football inflicted this damage? We didn't see no bleeding flowers, sir. We were just playing. Raw, if you and your teammates want to continue playing football, you will have to assist Mr Briggs and Mr Wilkes in their horticultural endeavour. A what? Mr Briggs, you've just cleaned your last toilet. And you have your green fingers to thank for it. That's bollocks, sir. These flowers are a fluke. I don't know nothing about Gentlemen, them. a new work programme has just been born here at Edgefield. Gardening. Gardening, sir. That's right, Dudley. Gardening. Look at the buds on this. I don't know how I get a whiff of that. Guys, listen, the governor is expecting a proper garden by next spring, and from what I've read, it ain't gonna be easy. I'd set laundry duty any day over this shit. This here is women's work. Yeah, I mean, look here, Briggs. I think we'd gladly give up football. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, gardening ain't the likes of us. <laughs> Right, Fergus, who are we kidding? We're no bloody gardeners. I saw the look in your eyes when you spotted those flowers, and it was love at first sight. We've been prisoners long enough, Colin. Let's be gardeners. Now, think of it. This was the governor's idea, right? Yes, sir. And who do you think carries the most weight when your parole review comes round? Uh, the governor. Right. So, we plant a nice little garden, and you lads stand to get the government's personal recommendation for release. Uh, not a bad idea, wouldn't you agree? So let's just get on with it and cut the crap, shall we? 
We prepared a list of things we need, sir. Um, well, there's a fork and spade, obviously. Um, a pair of shears. Some branch loppers. Hey, don't forget the hoe. Oh, yeah, a hoe. And a weed wand. A weed wand. How interesting. Oh, it is, Governor. It's this nifty little gadget. Looks a bit like a bicycle pump with a blowtorch on the end of it. Just aim it at them nasty little weeds, pull the trigger, and bam! Nukes them right out of the roots. Anything else, gentlemen? Um, hats and, and gloves, I suppose. Yeah. Tony? Bottle of Santan lotion would be nice. Indeed it would. And have you calculated the cost of all these items? Yes, sir. We've prepared a budget. <sighs> Very well. I, too, have prepared a budget. You want it, my love? This is a good idea. Don't you think you're pushing it a bit, putting spades and forks in the hands of murderers? The best place to seek God is in a garden. You can dig for him there. George Bernard Shaw. It's a dog, what is it? What do you think, Colin? I don't know, you know. It's not very good for sunlight. We're in England. Don't build your hopes up. Come on. Yep. No, it's not good. My God, Susan. Have you read all these? No. Well, then it's high time someone did. Georgina Woodhouse says it all comes down to two basic questions. What do you want your garden to do? And what flowers do you want to grow? Fergus. What do I want my garden to do? I thought it was our garden. Colin. 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Don't tell me what to do, Briggs. Look, just hang on a minute. I'm tired of waiting. This spot's as good as any. Why are you always in such a hurry all the time? Because I ain't going to be here for the rest of my life like you. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to make something of myself. Oi! I asked you not to do that. I ain't standing on no fucking sidelines. I've got just as much say in this as anyone. Look at me, right? The daffodils, they're going right here. Yeah. Daffodils? I've said anything about fucking daffodils. Hey! Hey, boy! Hey! If you don't Come mind, on. Come on. the old man will decide where the garden goes. and before I bring further dishonour to the Women's Royal Voluntary Center. Meet me in the woods behind a garden. You see this? Hampton Court Palace flower show. Biggest in the world it is. 
My God. Oh, well, let's enter. <laughs> You're dreaming, old man. No, I've never won an award in my entire life. This could be my big chance. You want something short of a picnic? Right, now it's time to germinate. With a little cooperation from Mother Nature, we should have a jolly nice little garden come this spring. Her Majesty's prison at Edgefield more closely resembles life on a university campus than a citadel of reform for Britain's worst blights. The so-called open prison is, in point of fact, an open invitation to disaster. Bastards. Why does your family never come to visit you? They want nothing to do with me. Will you never tell me why you're in here? If God could find it in his heart to forgive me after what I've done, he's not going to quibble over your sins, lad. You're sure about that, are you? I killed my wives. I passed the first two off as accidents, but when I got around to the third, it wasn't the police that worked it out. I, I gave myself up. I come to terms with the fact that alcohol turned me into something terrible. What, say? I'd be doing porridge till the day I die, which could be any time, my friend. Not many more opportunities for heart to hearts. I'm not the confessing type. You were starting up the vegetable garden next. Fancy them more than the flowers. That's what I'm going to do when I get out. I'm going to be a gardener. What do you think of that, John? Mum says that he won't be in town away at university. No, I'm, I'm going to be out in about 18 months. That'll be up to the pro board, Jimmy. I went ahead and painted it for myself, just in case I don't make it to spring. You'll make it. Splendid. Just splendid. It's a great day for you, gentlemen. A great day for Edgefield. What did I miss? What did I miss? I was just telling your colleagues how pleased I am with your horticultural endeavor, Mr. Wilkes. We now have heaven under our feet as well as over our heads. I'm such a fan, Mrs. Woodhouse, uh, to Marjorie. I have one quick question. I have an unruly cottoniester shrub. What should I do? Go with the chop, dear. Give it a nice haircut. One must never be afraid to use one's loppers. Thank you very much, Mrs. Woodhouse. And who shall I inscribe this to? To Colin Fergus, Tony, Jimmy, and Raw. Raw? <laughs> Mrs. Woodhouse, I was wondering if you might be so kind as to visit a garden that my husband's employees have planted. They did it all on a micro-budget, and they were completely inspired by your writings. Hello. I I'm frightfully sorry, but now that my mother's coming to an end, we're looking forward to a cup of coffee. Well, splendid. We can give you one. We're only ten minutes from here. Please. It would mean so much to the men. 
Primrose, you don't say we're at an end. You say we're on a punishing schedule and we're running late. I simply can't tell lies the way you can. I can't. I blush up like nobody's business. Social know-how isn't lies, Primrose. woman didn't say anything about a prison, did she? Such a jumble, all these disconnected dabs of colour. I really rather like it. <laughs> Who would have thought that the dog-toothed violet would be so compatible with that straggling group of Daphne Miserium? Quite a success, considering that arctic winter of ours. How about a big smile, Mrs. Woodhouse? I beg your pardon? I hope you don't mind, Mrs. Woodhouse, but, uh, open prisons being the brunt of such bad press lately, we thought Ashfield could use some good PR for a change. If you'll, uh, just stand in the middle next to the prisoners. Thank you. Darling. So, Mrs. Woodhouse, what do you think of a garden made by murderers? Murderers? Just one or two of them, ma'am. I really rather like it. Um, perhaps you and your daughter would care to join us all for lunch? Uh, thank you all very much, but we're on a punishing schedule and we're running late. It's been a long morning. We'd be delighted to join you. Good. This way. Mr. Briggs, have you always had green fingers? Only when he picks his nose. Hey, don't mind him, ma'am. Too many blows to the head. Well, actually, I, I just started gardening about six months ago. Oh, so then you have made strides. Nothing you couldn't do, I'm sure. Oh, I'm afraid in my case, the apple fell far from the tree. <laughs> to my mother's profound disappointment, I'm a total disaster in the garden. Really? Oh, her father was even worse. Refused to get out of the hammock. Of course, the gin and tonics didn't help. So, tell me, what stops you chaps from just, you know, absconding? Well, that'd be stupid, Mum. There's too much at stake. Go straight back to a closed prison. And we've all seen our share of dark days at Wormwood Scrubs. All right, gentlemen. Back to your duties. It was an honour to meet you, Mrs. Woodhouse. Watch out for slugs and sooty mould. They can absolutely make life hell. Bye, and best of luck to you, Mr. Briggs. So tell me, who did what and to whom? It's quite a notion for prison, isn't it? The tomatoes are more confined than the prisoners. Now you sound like our local member of parliament. The only way prison works is to keep people locked up. If our MP had his way, Gerald would never be allowed to let the men out on work release programmes. Work release? I don't suppose this would qualify, but I've been commissioned by a lovely couple to do their gardens at Osselbury House. My own gardeners are so overextended, they're going to stage a mutiny if I ask them. Primrose, go and see if our plants are around. I'm sure they'd love to meet the boys. No one's called me a boy since 1929. So maybe all raw. The rest have fuck up. So where the flocks? Some people may see this as just a mound of earth. But I, on the other hand, see it as the commencement of our homage to the goddess Flora. Hello! Hello! Hello, everybody. Uh, Georgina, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of you all to give Georgina a hand. I'm Lawrence. This is Nigel. How do you do? Uh, anything we can do to make your time at Osbury more enjoyable, don't hesitate to ask. I do hope you like shepherd's pie. And we have trifle for dessert. <laughs> right, well, excuse us, we've got work to do. Go on, off you go. Off you go. Off all you right. go, folks. Right, see you later. Bye. Bye. Let's get started. 
no more lectures and uh, hosting yet another benefit for the Orchid Society is equally abhorrent. No! No! You can't treat Mysterio so cruelly. If you cut into the hardwood, it'll never flower next year. Tony, Tony, Sorry. Tony, Tony. Uh, I don't know. You'll have to discuss the dates with Primrose. Primrose! Primrose! Oh, no. Oh! Oh, no. Just a little honeybee, Miss Woodhouse. Perfectly harmless. Just a little honeybee to you, but it could be death to me or all. Oh, let it alone. I'll get it. Go. 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 We need to get us hospital. She'll be all right, won't she? Yes, yes. It's an allergic reaction. Nothing too serious. The only time she gets a week's rest. All right. See you then, then. Oh, oh no. I I'll be by tomorrow morning to collect your mother's orders. What's he up to? I'm only just beginning to imagine. Tony, we do have a loo, you know. Nigel, you're a spoil sport. All right, sweetheart. And that's from the Lady and the Unicorn series. The Lady and her handmaiden are holding close-scented carnations. Don't go for carnations much, me. <laughs> Would you pay for it? Oh, couldn't put a price on it. It's been in my family for over 400 years. I hope you've got a good alarm system. Yeah, full stars the only alarm we need. That's a boy. How's everything going, Mr. Briggs? Good. How's your mother? They took her off the defibrillator today. Glad to hear it. You don't fancy giving me a hand, do you? Oh, no. I'd be more of a hindrance than a help. Oh, don't be silly. Come and help me with this. No, don't be so timid. If you just go for it, just rip it apart. That's it. Great. Right. OK. Now, replace it in the ground. Mother would be really pleased with what you've done. Thanks, Miss Widows. Primrose. It's a lovely name. I despise it. Good night. Guys. Guys, we're out of here. Yeah. Cheers, Miss Widows. I know, babe, I know. I, uh, just, I, 
but just wait, wait. Listen, listen to me. Shh, shh, shh. Don't, don't go worrying about money, all right? You, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> oh, Tony. Isn't it we do? <laughs> Silver foliage. It was quite clear in my design that I wanted purple foliage. When this clay soil goes cold in the winter, the silver will never survive. Yes, it will. I've seen to it. <laughs> Have you? A problem that's plagued the gardeners of Gloucestershire for over two centuries. I think that if you plant simple quartz crystals in the clay, they radiate warmth. They don't interfere with the roots, and they don't add any chemical compounds to upset the clay's natural pH balance. Upon what do you base this conclusion? I've been experimenting at Edgefield. There's loads of clay and quartz around there. I suppose that no one's ever bothered to mix the two together. No. I don't suppose they have. Well, Mr. Briggs, you have quite a future. Mm. They are the most brilliant and talented prisoners you'll ever meet. The work they did for me at Osbury House was simply stupendous. One in particular has a great deal of talent. I wish to sponsor them in their first show garden. At Hampton Court. I can just see the front page of the Daily Mail on opening day. Her Majesty surrounded by murderers, rapists and such. Now there's a photo op. It might do us some good. It's sure to boost attendance. Well, I'm against it. We have the public safety to consider. My personal recommendation has paved the way for many an upstart's entree into this charmed circle, including yours, Julian. And let us not forget what Her Majesty the Queen had to say on the subject. Gardening has been a national obsession for centuries. There cannot be any other occupation that absorbs equally every section of society. Wildflowers, all shapes and sizes. Bluebells, sunflowers, daisies. Daisies, tulips, fucking bluebells. I can't take this anymore. You lot are a disgrace to the prison system. Greek legend tells us that when Aphrodite was hurrying to the side of a dying lover Adonis, she was scratched by thorns as she pushed her way through a white rose hedge. And forever after, the blooms have been tinted red with her blood. I think a scented garden's a lovely idea for Hampton Court. It was Fergus's choice. His sense of smell is one of the few things he's got that still works. Primrose, did you know that a white rose signifies purity. A yellow rose marks the end of an affair. And a red rose signifies passion. Really? I, I never knew that. How's that? 
Not too hot, I hope. Now then. This comes from Miss Georgina's private supply. The caviar of them all, it is. Now listen. I don't want you getting stressed out just because you're in the mother of all garden shows. I mean, it's hard to believe, I know. But just because you come from a little prison garden doesn't mean to say you can't compete with the big boys. You can. You've got just as much chance as any of the others. You know, Susan, I think we've got a chance of a prize at Hampton Court. I truly do. I hope so, sweetheart. And now back to rural crime. Jane Cavendish reports in Mossbury House. Can you tell us exactly what happened? We arrived home from the opera to find the entire house ransacked. They took it all. Irreplaceable artifacts dating back to the 16th century. It's a devastating loss. Gerald. Simply devastating. I know the police are investigating, but do you have any idea who might have done it? No, none at all. Well, obviously, you have to consider the prisoners from Her Majesty's Prison Edgefield, don't you? I believe they were doing some work in your garden only a month ago. Isn't that correct? The perpetrator of the crime was apprehended this morning in Bristol, boarding a train. He had a plan of Oslebury House on him. Says he bought it off one of the gardeners. The police suspect one or all of you men. I'm giving you until tomorrow morning to sort out which of you sell those house plans. If I don't hear anything by then, you'll all be shipped back to a real prison. Is that clear? This couldn't have happened at a worse time. What about the flower show? Cancelled. What are you looking at? You were the only one of us who set foot in that house. They invited me in for a piss. A little shit. Oh, boys, boys. I swear my baby's eyes, it wasn't me. What, mate? You short termers always, always screw it up for us lifers. Sarah, if the kid here is about that robbery over at Oselbury House, you tell him I had nothing to do with it. Right, nothing whatsoever. And you tell him about Hampton Court. Because I'm sick of disappointing him. Whoa, where are you going? I'd rather sleep in the potting shed than stay here. Cheers, mate. Next week, our guest is Georgina Woodhouse to tell us all about the Hampton Court Palace Flower Show, the blockbuster gardening event of the summer. The outdoor gardens represent the cream of the world's horticultural talent, today's big names and the stars of the future, all of whom will be digging for victory. <laughs> Minister, it's one black mark on an otherwise untarnished record. That's still one too many from the point of view of public confidence. After all, the young man is still at large. Don't close this in, Peggy. Most of these men are coming to the end of some very long sentences. They've got to be prepared. Well, if they're not, they're far more likely to commit further offences. We've been in the outfit a long time, Gerald. You know I respect the work you're doing here at Edgefield. But until this thing cools down, all work release programs in the private sector are suspended. <laughs>
Does the Secretary of State support or decline the prisoner's release? Just the letters. I see from your file you've served the greater part of your sentence. You feel you're ready to rejoin society? I would imagine that I'm the only one here who knows what it means to have taken a life. You think about it every day. And you wish that someone would just come and take yours and get it over with. But then one day, you discover that you can give life. Create life. Grow something that needs caring. Feeding. To those of you sitting here thinking that rehabilitation through gardening just sounds too stupid to swallow, that's your right. But most of my life was spent in a bang-up jail and a prisoner is all I thought I'd ever be. But today, whether you parole me or not, I no longer think of myself that way. I'm a gardener. I'm a gardener. Bloody good one as well. And to any of you wrestling with your own unresolved issues, you know, displaced anger, that sort of thing, I recommend it highly. Goodbye, lads. Do your best for me while I'm away. I'll try and visit you as much as I can. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. <laughs> now go on. Hope I never see you again. Make sure you bag the roses at the first sign of frost, yeah? I won't forget. You can depend on me, son. I was 18 and totally wasted the night I caught them together. She was the girl I was planning to marry. He was my brother, my baby brother. I lost it. I just went for him. I didn't know what I was doing. When he stopped fighting back, I realized what I'd done. My mum and dad never spoke to me after that. They acted as if both their boys died that night. All I've got left of him is a photograph. Take this with you. To the outside. I don't want her to die in here with me. Remember, Briggs, one small fuck up and you'll be straight back to Edgefield. Now then, you sure you don't need a lift? No, thanks. Sorry about Hampton Court. It meant just as much to me as it did to you. I know it did, sir. Good luck out there. Good luck in here. We just lost our best gardener.
Tell me, Colin, how are you adjusting to your new life? Well, I think the transition's been made much easier by your daughter. <laughs> Those who get out and have no one, don't know how they do it. Oh, this must be terribly hard. Mother, you always attributed the failure of all your relationships to the fact that none of the men were any good in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found one who is. Have you? And you could really use your help finding him a job. Oh! Oh, my. Oh, my. Excuse me. Oh! oh. A bit dramatic, don't you think? It was very rude, Mother. Oh, Prim, you know how fond I am of Colin, but honestly, dear, the man was serving a life sentence. God only knows what he did. He killed his brother. Oh! It was an accident. And who knows what might trigger it off again. I mean, it could be over the most trivial of things. I, I shudder to think of the consequences if you should happen to burn the Sunday roast. It's funny how open-minded you are about him publicly. But when it comes to my happiness, suddenly he's judged by what he was and not by what he is. That's what I like about plants. They don't answer back. in that topiary. The border needs fortifying. I mean, the guy doesn't know what he's doing. We'll find you a garden of your own. Don't worry. You've been saying that all summer, and still I'm a delivery boy. 
I've been to every nursery and garden centre in the area, but, you know, I'm an ex-con. I'm not going to look in. What's it going to take? A personal reference from the Queen. It was the housekeeper who gave the plans to her boyfriend. And the wanker tried to blame us to save her ass. So Tony was telling the truth. Hey, hey! Did you hear about Hampton Court? <laughs> They've invited us back to do a garden for next year's flower show. No shit, you lucky bastards. Yeah, but Colin, listen, listen there. Are we gonna do a garden without you, mate? What are you talking about? You got Fergus? He's artistic. Listen, Fergus ain't doing too well. He's, um... Well, he's gone downhill since you left. Really? Tell him I'll pop in for a visit real soon, yeah? All right. Nice one. All right, gotta go. Take care. See ya. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I'm about to fuck up. So what else is new? They say that to abandon one's life for a dream is to know its true worth. I've got this crazy idea in my head that I'm good enough to win something at Hampton Court. It's a hell of a way of going about it, but then I've always done things the wrong way around, haven't I? Please forgive me for this, because I certainly won't forgive myself. I hope this is the last time that anybody ever sends you yellow roses. disappointed in you, Mr. Briggs. Our hope at Edgefield is, once a man is released, he never returns. That said, I'm expecting you to pull out all the stocks at Hampton Court. Huh? What's this thing doing back here? It wasn't quite ready for the outside. Welcome back, Green Fingers. Ooh. Well, I have to say, I'm a bit miffed to see how well you guys have done without me. Ain't like the old days no more. Hello, Colin. All right, John. It's a fucking waiting list to get in here now. Jimmy and me have been having a think, Colin, and we decided we want you to come up with a design for Hampton Court. Gentlemen, the Home Secretary and the Prisoners Minister. Most impressive, gentlemen. The Home Secretary's quite a gardener himself. Oh, you exaggerate, Peggy. I'm what you would call an armchair gardener. More an inveterate reader of other people's exploits than uh, an actual tiller of the soil. The Home Secretary has come up with an idea for Hampton Court. Mind you, it, uh, it only just hatched over lunch. I thought we'd go for a bit of the unexpected. A rock garden. Lots of prickly, hard plants with not the slightest hint of colour representing incarceration, with the goal of freedom symbolised by a juicy red strawberry archway. I didn't break my parole only to be laughed out of Hampton Court. There's something much bigger at stake here than a flower show, Mr Briggs. After years of fighting the Home Office, we've just recently begun to make inroads to ensure the survival of open prisons. Look, put your ego aside for one moment and give some consideration to the scores of inmates working through the system who've yet to experience a place like Edgefield. Yeah, but a rock garden, sir. Do you honestly think we stand a chance in hell of winning anything? That all depends on your definition of winning, doesn't it, Mr Briggs? Mm. 
about as subtle as a hemorrhoid. The only thing missing is a bloke with a pickaxe. So, Colin, what was it like being with a woman again? Well, it weren't that great if it came back here now, was it? Every day I miss her. Primrose was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Now remember, these only need one hour a day under these lamps, OK? You got it? Yeah, got it. Hey, we need every last one. Right. This archway's got to be bursting with strawberries. Where do you think they'll bury me, Colin? Well, Westminster Abbey's out of the question, I'm afraid. I've been thinking that being cremated is the way to go. Dust the heart. And unto dust shall they return. Yeah, all right, old man. <laughs> Any female visitors lately? No, I haven't. The way you left things, I'm not surprised. Fergus. Do you think I'll ever be capable of loving someone? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I spent my life in prison. That's how it went. But you're different. You've got things to do. So the next time they let you out, don't go fucking it up. Raw! Bloody hell. We've got two weeks left. We'll never be able to replace them. I did exactly what you told me. Time must be broken. Bloody mice. I don't believe this. Look, I, I've, I've got a lovely bunch of red peppers. Maybe we can um, fill up the trellis with them. Red peppers? Oh, come on, Colin, don't lose the faith. Still got the cactus, look. Colin, Colin. Oh, what now? Fergus. We said we'd walk together, baby, come what may. That come the twilight, should we lose our way? If as we're walking, a hand should slip free, I'll wait for you. Should I fall behind? We swore we'd travel Darling side by side We'd help each other Stay in stride But each lover's steps fall So differently But I'll wait for you And if I should fall behind Wait for from the looks of it, it appears that HMP, Edgefield and Flower Shows just aren't meant to be. From the looks of it, we're all just a bunch of deadbeats. No opers. Drakes of society, right? Wrong. I know different. If Fergus Wilkes were alive today, they'd tell me not to give up without a fight. Adversity is your ally, lad. Well, I've had my absolute fill of adversity, and now I'm looking for some allies. Anyone here who wants to come with me and make history at Hampton Court Palace, step forward. Yeah, we be. Should I fall behind with me? Should I fall 
I believe I have the last word on the subject, Mr. Briggs. Good luck. the perfume and the pleasure filling the air at the gardening year's most anticipated event, the Royal Horticultural Show's summer extravaganza at Hampton Court Palace. Henry VIII's glorious palace by the River Thames has seen nearly 500 years of spectacle and pageantry, but I think even Henry couldn't fail to be impressed by this feast of flowers. Hello. I'm Georgina Woodhouse, and I so remember my first flower show victory. I'd just given birth to my daughter, Primrose, and I was desperate to get back to gardening. Every year, Hampton Court Palace has a habit of showcasing something quite new and unique. And this year, we have found an entry that must be one of the most unusual in the history of the show. It was made without sponsorship on a tiny budget and from the confines of a prison. I am here with the men from Her Majesty's Prison, Edgefield. Tell me, how does it feel to be exhibiting at Hampton Court? It's terribly exciting. I'd like to thank all my mates back at Edgefield who lent a hand. <laughs> Colin, tell me about your design for the show. Well, it's a wildflower garden, and it's all about finding beauty in the most unlikely of places, and it's dedicated to our friend, Fergus Wilkes. Fergus. Colin, Colin, hurry up. The judges are here. They hate it. They don't get it. They look more like rock garden types to me. Trying to read those judges is like trying to unravel the mystery of the Mona Lisa's smile. See you at the gala. What gala's that, then? Sorry, uh, men. It's for VIPs and non-prisoner competitors only. Fine by me. I had nothing to wear anyway. Oh, look, there's some boys over there. Got a confession to make, lads. I left those heat lamps on too long, on purpose. I've got a confession too. I let them mice eat all them strawberries. Well, thanks for owning up, guys. Just leaves one question, doesn't it? Who torched that bloody awful rock garden? Mother, I'm really not up to it. Oh, darling, how are you ever going to meet anyone if you never leave the house? <gasps> Look who's there. Colin! This is all about spite. Now that you have my blessing, you're deliberately trying to defy me. I know I've not been an ideal mother, but I do love you, Primrose. And so does Colin. He's just had a little bit of garden fever, that's all. I so want you to be happy. I really do.
Primrose? Hi. You look stunning. Thank you. This is who you left me for. I hate to admit it, but she's fantastic. <laughs> Colin, you planted primroses. You were a total shit to leave me the way you did. Second biggest mistake I ever made. There's more to life than gardening, you know. I know. Are you seeing anyone? No. Neither am I. I keep hoping that when I get out next spring, that you might be there waiting for me. Marigold for the millennium has just walked away with the silver gilt. And to Fontley's Nurseries in Hampshire, a gold for uh, fuchsias and delphiniums. Oh. Congratulations. And <laughs> uh, this concludes the medal winners in all the major categories. Now, it is not every year that we bestow the Tudor Rose Award, but by unanimous ratification of the Royal Horticultural Society's Judging Committee, we have singled out a garden for that most coveted of awards. <laughs> And this year, it goes to the Feng Shui Garden of Harmony. We salute all the gardeners who grew for gold and got it, as well as those who didn't. So until next year, thank you for watching and happy gardening. So. Men. Excuse me. I got into the prison service some 30 years ago because I envisaged doing something positive with men like you to force you to go to your core and rebuild your integrity. I lay far greater store in that victory than in any medal they had to offer today. You're holding up rather well. I have a lot to be happy about. It's the best cut I've ever tasted. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Miss Woodhouse, you think we made a mistake not going with a more typically English garden? You know, no graffiti, no crash cars, no concrete. Oh, I like a bit of rough raw. Excuse me. Her Majesty requests the presence of the gardeners of Edgefield in the Royal Palace. Her Majesty? The Queen? HRH herself. She was quite impressed with your garden. Holy shit. <gasps> Unofficially, she thought you were robbed. <gasps> oh, come on, John. Well, come along then, gentlemen. Let's not keep Her Majesty waiting. I'm sorry, sir. Hmm? Gardeners only. Oh. Excuse us, would you?
of advice, lads. Don't forget to curse you.